Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that. If you're returning, how you doing? What we're going to talk about right now is something that I have been researching. And it's food, but it's how people are getting food. We've all heard the saying, desperate times, desperate measures, desperate people, right? All right, well you know about the black market right well people are actually buying and selling food on the black market in the united kingdom the ongoing cost of the living crisis is fueling a surge in shoplifting and many more britons are selling the food that they steal on the black market but it's not just happening there it's happening here too Retail thefts are costing British retailers over a billion pounds or $1.26 billion in 2023. Shoplifting has reached the highest levels it has ever recorded, while the number of unresolved retail theft incidents has also skyrocketed. The country's cost of living crisis has made people think of alternative ways of sourcing items that are essential to them. Shops big and small had, that had not faced major levels of shoplifting in the past were now reporting serious incidents, including thieves clearing out entire shelves within seconds. I personally think that it's because the black market has gotten so much bigger. The cost of living crisis is making more and more consumers willing to turn a blind eye to purchasing stolen food. I don't think hardworking people are who are now finding themselves in poverty are suddenly turning into criminals overnight. I think it's more complicated than that. Um, a lot of people are more willing to buy stolen goods than ap actually shoplifting themselves because they're one step removed from it, if that makes any sense. It's not surprising that more people are obtaining food through criminal means. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you were to go to a food pantry, okay, important nutritional foods have essentially skyrocketed in price right and food poverty will be particularly acute during the winter months and with the food banks they provide only the essential foods that are generally not particularly attractive nor are they particularly nutritious but they get you by right and when money is tight when people have spent a long time saying no to other family members, the opportunity to buy something a bit more premium, I guess you can say, and higher end with ask no questions and off the back of a lorry or a truck, as it were, is very appealing. It is very common for community crime to surge during the cost of living crisis that involves high inflation and high unemployment. Now, the police and the British government are trying to be ahead of the curve. They know that these crimes are increasing and actually know that there is an organized element to it but the main goal will be to target organized crime gangs whose primary strategy is targeting retailers. The police should be taking a zero tolerance approach to shoplifting. But food is the most stolen type of cargo. Food is a more valuable black market item than electronics, with food fetching actually 70 cents on the dollar compared to 30 cents or less for electronics. And that's the lower amount of security technology in food shipments. It makes it easier to avoid capture. The number of thefts tends to grow alongside 
um, increases in commodity and food prices. So here's a question for you. If you knew, would you buy stolen food? If you knew it was stolen, would you buy it? The black market for food is surprisingly not small at all. There have been reports of theft of 6 million pounds of maple syrup in Canada, the robbery of $65,000 of chicken wings, um, $100,000 in hamburger meat, and it's all gone on to the black market. But it goes even deeper than this. In the deepest corners of the internet, cyber criminals, they are trafficking welfare benefits on illicit marketplaces, dealing from or stealing, sorry, from the the country's most vulnerable, and that is EBT SNAP food stamp benefit recipients. Thieves are targeting uh food assistance and other benefit programs fed by billions in federal funding with minimal security measures that are in place. They're purchasing stolen benefits, information online, printing the data onto cloned debit cards and cashing them out. Recent data breaches are fueling these marketplaces, though it's not possible to pinpoint which cyber attacks may be supplying this online economy. Targeting food assistance recipients can also give these thieves access to other welfare benefits. The SNAP program, uh, it's also you can get your, if you get cash assistance, you can get it on the same card. And also your disability pro, um, assistance goes on the same card. Okay, here are two pictures that I'm going to share with you that shows you how people are speaking to each other uh, when they are getting ready to do a transaction, I guess you could say. Now, these criminals are actually selling stolen EBT information online in a ver variety of ways through social media, messaging boards, and on the dark web. After purchasing the EBT information, criminals will clone the SNAP funds onto blank debit cards and then use the cloned cards to mass purchase items that they can resell for profit, like baby formula. Okay, remember with the shortage and everything that we had back in, what was it, 2020, 2021, okay? Or if the EBT funds are for cash assistance or your disability, your social security, fraudsters can simply go to an ATM and drain that account. Now, it is unclear which of the many data breaches over the last few years could be bolstering these marketplaces. It's often impossible to link a case of benefits theft to a particular breach. Uh, but two breaches in particular have raised concerns for experts. And for those recipients that receive a lot of benefits, okay, we all know who they are, okay. Uh, it's a known fact that they are buying food with their benefits and they're selling the food on the black market as well. Individuals, um, now these are known facts because when I was doing my research, I was like, holy cow, I, how are they getting away with this? But it's the truth. Individuals will swipe their EBT cards at corrupt retailers and they receive part of the value back in cash, typically like 50 cents on the dollar. Um, individuals will sell their EBT benefits to others at a fraction for the uh, value of cash. Uh, some people put their own food stamps for sale online while others traffic online in stolen EBT card numbers and PIN numbers. Individuals buy food with their EBT cards and then resell it to other retailers for cash at a fraction of the value. In recent years, EBT benefit theft through card skimmers has soared across the nation at retailers from corner stores to Walmarts. EBT numbers and pens 
are a great target for theft because the cards, they don't have chips. If you even look at our regular debit cards, the Visa debit cards that we get from our banks, they have the, the chips on them. The EBT cards, they don't have those. So then you have phishing. Okay, not phishing, <laughs> but phishing, P-H. I-S-H-I-N-G, and other sorts of EBT uh, data hacks are on the rise as well. With phishing, uh, thieves posing as government caseworkers, they'll use text messages to snap recipients to gain card numbers and pins. And these are just a few examples of what is actually going on, okay? So I want you to be aware of what's happening because like I said, desperate times, desperate measure, desperate people, and food stamp recipients are actually, and it's like I said, it's not just happening in, in Europe, it's, ha it's happening here. They'll take their food stamp benefits, especially if they get a large amount of money every single month, and they'll sell the food that they buy on the black market for like 50 cents on the dollar, 70 cents on the dollar. Yeah, it's insane. So, all right, guys, uh, that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one. You stay safe, you stay positive, you keep prepping, and as always, fear less. Ciao.